MPI, we show the new product introductions, the new things that you're waiting to see each week. You know, um, when that Siri thing happened, yeah, I, for, I, you know, I didn't tell everybody what the rest of the things were going to be on the show. I think I don't think I talked about some of these things, but yeah, but you, this were, is, you were shocked. Uh, yeah, I thought I turned it off. Okay. So this is brought to you by DigiKey. It's Beagle Board. There are going to be no robots talking during this segment. Okay, I can't promise that though <laughs> so let's learn how to make and use some of these things let's like, make robots. what is beagle board and how can it help me um work with siri okay <laughs> well if you want to make uh robots or you want to make uh, any kind of electronics and you want a powerful little board there's a new board that just got released from beagle board that's available at digikey this is the beagle pocket 2 um, this is a tiny little board you can kind of see the scale i think it's like maybe three inches by two inches or so um, it's a single board computer, but it's very, very small. It's got a lot of IO available. Um, it uses the TI Sitara processor. Um, and it's a really nice upgrade to the Pocket Beagle, which we covered when we talked about the Octavo processor. Um, this time they actually put the chip and the RAM on and routed it themselves. You can see, um, oh, well, I'll show you the, the label diagram in a minute. Um, but this is a really nice board. One of the things that's nice about it is it's, it's designed to be able to run off of battery power. Like it has good power management built in. So if you want to make portable projects um, and you want lots of GPIO pins. Uh, Single board computers are not known for their portable power management-ness. Yeah, yeah, but this one is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Pocket Eagle 2, you know, what's nice is that it's less expensive. It comes with a better processor. It now comes with a 64-bit Cortex-A53. So you, it's, it can handle much more data but much more quickly. It's a higher, it's a more recent um, revision of the, of the ARM Cortex series. You've got a dual core, one gigahertz. Uh, there's also a uh, Cortex M4. I think there's a dual Cortex M4 inside, running at like 100 megahertz or so. Um, and there's uh, separately routed 512 megabytes of DDR4 RAM on board. Um, this is like the whole chip with all the details. You, know, you can pick this up at DigiKey. I'll, I'll show you the link. Um, this is a very powerful chip. It can you know, handle displays. Um, there is camera support, although I don't think, believe it's routed onto the GPIO pins, although I, I didn't. You know, I spent like half an hour looking and I didn't look too seriously. The display stuff is routed out. Um, it's like a nice little powerful chip. And uh, it's got on-chip RAM as well. And then um, external DDR, it looks like. So, um, and this is how it works out. What's nice, like I said, you know, there is um, these ideal diodes inside. These the LM7300, uh, which is like the chip I'm actually, I just got some prototypes for. It's got uh, EMMC built in. So you don't need an SD card if you don't want. You can load um, flash memory, the flash memory onto the board, but there's also an SD card slot if you need more storage or you want like external storage. There is a power management IC. Um, there's USB type C that is connects directly to the gadget mode of the AM6232. Um, but there's also USB host available. And um, like I said, there's battery charging capability built in, you know, battery leads into, you know, USB and battery, whichever one is higher leads into the uh, power management. Um, so it's really designed to make it easy to embed this into small portable gadgets. Um, so this is the top of the board. So you see the main processor, there's some um, LEDs, there's the um, power management IC, the USB, which can charge the battery, that's a LiPo battery. Uh, you have a user button, power button. There's a separate MSPMO. I looked into this a little bit. It looks like it's a coprocessor that's connected over I squared C that can do like analog reads and stuff for you. Um, JTAG, if you want to program the chip directly, but also there's like a bootloader built in. And on the opposite side, um, there is the standard CAPE headers. So these are uh, two by 18, two two by 18 headers. There's a UART port, so that's like if you want to log in directly without having to go through the USB. Um, that, like I said, that optional micro SD storage. And the CAPE headers is kind of what people are expecting. You're kind of expected to use it because on its own, um, while this hardware is really good, you probably want to connect hard, you know, external hardware to it to access the GPIO, to connect the TFT screen, to connect buttons and sensors and stuff. And so this would mount sort of similar to like how a compute module for Raspberry Pi works, but it uses um, much bigger, easier to use headers. 
Um, so what's nice about this is that there's a USB port on board and you can like connect directly to it and it connects directly to the chip so you can bootload directly. There's also a little UART port that you can use your Pico probe uh, to connect to it. Mm. I thought that was really nice. So it's like you have the JSTSH connector, you plug it in and you can uh, console in if you want to get like, you know, the low level UART control. The board is clever. It's clever. These are the two headers. Um, like I said, there's two 36 pin headers and this is like a standardized pinout. Um, they're of course closer together than the uh, original Beagle board because it's the pocket version, but you still have a lot of stuff. There's analog inputs, there's lots of GPIO, there's the TFT, you can see the USB pins here, multiple power supplies, three volt, five volt, internal, you know, the USB external, USB to, you know, host device. Um, on the other one, you know, like even more GPIO, there's the GPIO that you can mux in from that microcontroller on board if you want to have a separate microcontroller. Um, the battery temperature monitor, reset. So you kind of have everything you need to, um, you know, like this would be like the brains of your design. You plug this in and then you have like full control over, um, you know, the operating system. You'd have it interact with the hardware. Um, so each of those, uh, 36 times two, 72 uh, pins, you know, there's multiple options available for all of them. So this is just like an example for like, you know, P1, like the port one, pin eight, 10, um, eight, nine, and 10, and 11, it shows you like, well, two of them are USB, those are the top, but the bottom ones, you can like, there's UARTs, there's tons of SPIs, there's like six I squared C, there's timers, there's PWMs, there's like a ton of steps. So you can mux them around, you have a lot of flexibility if you want lots of PWMs, want lots of analog inputs, lots of SPI ports, lots of UARTs. Yeah. Another nice thing about it is, um, as mentioned there, and this is true of the Citara um, group, and you know we've seen people do to the Beagle board, it can drive directly these TFT displays. So if you want like a low cost built-in display, you can use SPI displays, but these TF, you know, TTL TFTs, you can do, you know, 800 by 480 or even larger, I think like you can do 1064 by 800 maybe is the max size uh, um, built in and you just like wire up the pins and it just kind of magically works as long as you load the uh, kernel um, overlay. What's nice is because there's so many GPIO available on those ports, you still have plenty of pins left over for like I squared C and connectors and USB and SPI, et cetera. Uh, some good examples of you know, accessories if you want to like, you know, pick something up from DigiKey, these are stock there, or you want to use these as inspiration for, you know, how to design your own board. So this is the like little gamer and you see the uh, Beagle Pocket plugs in at the bottom. There's lots of GPIO, there's a buzzer. There is, I think like 320 by 240 SPI display, you know, that you can play games on, USB host and a little battery connector. Um, and then there's also this tech lab board, which is a little less expensive, it doesn't have a TFT, but it does have RGB LEDs so you can practice PWMing, seven segments so you can do like high speed, you know, refreshes, USB host, USB client, USB serial, buzzer, for PWM, et cetera, I squared this accelerometer on here, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of, um, again, a lot of ways to experiment with what you can do with this chip, because what I like about it is it has a lot more hardware peripherals than just you know, your standard Raspberry Pi. This is meant to like, it can do much more like PWMs, analog inputs, um, you know, multiplexed outputs and stuff. That's, this can do that quite easily. Um, and then another thing that I really like is, unlike a lot of single board computers, the uh, accessories and the main board are all published under open source licenses. So if you go to the GitHub repo, like I downloaded the EagleCAD file and like there's also KiCAD um, available. You can use this as the base for your design, you know, like take what you want, leave what you don't, which is really nice, saves you like a couple of board spins. And then the main repo for the Pocket Beagle has all the files on it already. So again, you know, you can download the design files right now. And if you want, you can pick up the AM6232 chip from DigiKey if you so want for like, you know, 11 bucks or so. And you could wow your own design and make your own dev board if you want. Um, so I like the openness and like flexibility of the Beagle board family. It's, it's different than other single board computers, but I like that they're going in a different direction. There's also a webinar next week. Uh, so good timing if you want to check it out, hosted by digikeyandbeagleboard.org. Um, probably Cardinal will be there. 
they're great at answering questions um, and helping people get started with their designs. So uh, go sign up. It's free. And this is in stock, and it's thirty bucks. I think it's a really good deal. So you get, <laughs> of course, it's a really good deal. Well, yeah, it's a computer. It's a computer, but you get like the four megabytes of onboard flash, and you get like you know the dual, you know Cortex A fifty three, and you get the SRAM. And it's like I know there's a lot of competition, but it's like you get a lot. I like what I like is those pin headers are very easy for beginners. You just you can like plug in wires. And so you get the you know compactness of like a compute module, but you get the flexibility of like plugging in the wire, so you can like connect anything you want. Can I talk about this MPI a little bit? Yeah, because I really like it. Yeah, I want to say um, you know at Adafruit we do sort of bug reports. We do hug reports in writing, where someone does something neat. I want to uh, say shout out to Jason and crew at Beagleboard because. From the beginning, they decided to commit to open source. They've published their files. Yeah, they publish everything. You can download them all. They did yeah. everything right. I think the Raspberry Pi, had it not come out, the Beagle Bone would have been like the choice because it's very close to what we saw Bunny doing with Chumbi, and it was going this way. You have a lot more choices and flexibility as far as like your final designs with the BeagleBoard directly. Raspberry Pi solved that, but Raspberry Pi, you know, trading co with the modules and like the entire the yeah. B2B industry. But this is, you know, essentially a TI um, uh, eval board. It is and it isn't. Like, I, you know, it's not, they're not a TI group. No, but but that's good. Yeah, but it's, yeah. I like that it, it, it does stuff that other single board computers don't. And it has like this good community support. Yeah, and the reason I say that is because we're in the middle of this tariff thing and I think um, and I'm going to email Jason maybe like a, a, a URL uh, link to this. I don't know. And, and I really think that it's it's a great time to get a, a beagle board and jump into this community because what if like we have to be really creative about how we do computing again? Mm -hmm. And beagle boards use all flavors of Linux, and usually that's a hard thing to get spun up on. Mm. But with LLMs, you can get a lot of real time yeah. in the terminal help about how to do the basic things. You have one-on-one -on -one help. So I think there's gonna be a resurgence in single board computers only because the resources that the Raspberry Pi put out for Raspberry Pi yeah. are available for all single board computers now, essentially. Yeah. Look, Python so anyways, runs on this board yeah. just fine. So I'm excited, okay. I'm excited. Okay, that is MPI. Uh, Jason, good work, everybody. Thank you for keeping a nonprofit open hardware thing going. Thank you, bye. Hi, on MPI.